All right, uh, welcome everybody to this warm day of September. We have finally brought in the nice warm weather. Um, we are quite privileged today actually to discuss one of the most important books uh, written by a very prominent and historical figure in our politics, Musibudi uh, Mangena. This is actually his ninth book, I think, uh, reflecting on a number of issues that uh, impact our public life, the number of challenges that we have. Um, this is the book. It, it proposes a number of solutions to the problem that we have using a black consciousness perspective. Uh, and of course, there are quite a number of questions around this. Is BCM still relevant? Uh, was it tied to a particular project, uh, or is it something that can be applied generally to South African life? Um, with uh, Musibudi Mangena, we have also Matata Tsejo, a veteran journalist that we all know, uh, who will serve as our respondent. Let me start off with uh, a brief bio of both gentlemen. Um, so that I, I, I was once in a discussion where someone as bio was not uh, cited and, and the facilitator of the discussion realized that and only cited the bio with two minutes left in the discussion. And the person concerned was not entirely happy. So let me, let me, avoid, let me avoid those mistakes and do the proper things from the very beginning. <laughs> well, Musibudi Mangena, if, if you've been following the South African politics, uh, for a while now, you should be familiar with um, Dr. Mangena. Also, speakers have appropriated him. They call him Mangena, but it's not Mangena, it's Mangena. Uh, he, he's part of the generation that revived South African politics uh, in the 1970s um, as part of SASO, South African Student Organization, as well as the Black People's Convention. For his activities in the PCM, he was imprisoned in 1973 for five years uh, at Robben Island. Upon his release, he was banned and restricted to uh, Lubua Homo, uh, or is it Lubua Homeland, uh, for five more years. And whilst incarcerated at Robben Island, he started his studies, uh, BSc, uh, and went on to do his honors. Um, and after he had served his uh, banning orders uh, in 1981, he left South Africa uh, for exile, where he became involved in the activities of the Black Consciousness Movement of Azania, BCMA, uh, which was the external wing of uh, the Black Consciousness Movement. He returned in South Africa in, in 1994 and was soon elected president of the merged uh, Azapo and PCMA. Um, he was president of Azapo, Azapo retained the name and was elected soon thereafter MP and served in government first as deputy minister of education and later as minister of education of science and technology. Uh, and as I said earlier, this is his ninth book. Um, our panelist, uh, Matata Tsedu, is also a prominent name, a distinguished figure in South African journalism. He's edited a number of leading newspapers in South Africa, including the City Press and the Sunday Times. He's also been part of numerous other, other uh, newspapers, the Star, so working where he served in the editorial awards or executives of those newspapers. He holds a number of awards, including the Neiman Fellowship, which he served at Harvard University. Uh, upon his retirement from active journalism, he served as the head of the Media 24 Journalism Academy and has also been involved in a number of uh, formations that seek to improve and advance the rights of journalists. For all his distinguished career uh, in journalism and public service, he was awarded the National Order of Ikamanga in silver 
by the President of the Republic in 2019. Today, Mawatata has completely stepped back from journalism and is actually a farmer. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Matata. Um, <laughs> all right. Now back to the discussion. Um, as I was saying earlier, uh, you propose to, to, to Dr. Mangana, you propose uh, black consciousness orientation as a way of tackling some of the problems that we have. Um, what is it about black consciousness that you think it could provide a remedy to these policy? Some of these are policy technical issues, or they come across as such, but you are proposing a philosophical remedy. Uh, to someone, to, to a bystander or an onlooker, that would look a little bit odd. It would be a misfit. How do you explain that? Well, thank you very much. Um, may I start by saying that uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I was looking up there trying to count the number of uh, books that <laughs> uh, I'm counting up to eight. Uh, uh, I'm not sure there is a ninth one. <laughs> that is still coming. Uh, may, maybe that, that that's still coming. And the burning order restricted me to my querying, uh, not Le Bois Um And in fact, in um, Makulering, that's where I first met Matata, who was just uh, taking off as a journalist. And, and, and he, he wrote about the fact that uh, there is uh, this person who has been banned and restricted to this place called Makulering. And here he is. And um, it was the old times. I think he was still filing his stories via a public telephone booth. Uh, <laughs> um, he wasn't established yet. Um, may I, uh, before I come to that, uh, just indicate that uh, this was not a, an emotionally easy book for me to write. It is not about just facts. Um, it is about emotion, about sentiment, about feeling, um, about the fact that uh, our people have gone this far. Uh, they suffered for centuries uh, under settler colonialism, and they fought very hard. And we are where we are, and when we have got political power, we mess up. Um, uh, after so many of our people have made sacrifices, uh, some had been tortured and imprisoned. You indicated that I was at Robben Island, uh, where I met so many patriots and so on. We know that many of them were killed, either on the battlefield or in detention cells. And so this is about them. It's about us as a people. And um, this book ought to have been out, say, two years ago. Uh, there's been quite a lot of up and down with the uh, publishers and, and editors um, who is saying that the book was too angry and <laughs> it to be toned down. And so what you have in your hands now is um, a, a, a book which is has gone through the mill, through this up and down. And so the toning down has has happened. And by the time I ended up with uh, uh, NB publishers, uh, the toning down had happened quite, quite a great deal. And it had happened to a point where I know that I couldn't go any further without um, changing something and what, what I really wanted to write about. The fact that we are all very angry with the way things are going at present. Now, the point is that uh, South Africa is in trouble uh, at the moment. Um, and yet we are not a poor country. And we are not with a, uh, we are a people that has no agency. That's where the problem is. And I was listening to uh, Dr. Matsidi, so uh, last night giving the uh, 
um, uh, Steve Biko Memorial Lecture, uh, in which she was bemoaning the fact that uh, on the continent, our leaders, you know, when they have uh, leave us in their hands, especially to attend to health issues um, affecting us, uh, they would rather beg, you know, begging other people to come and help us to, to, to solve our problems. And, and so uh, I'm saying that it is, an, it is a, a, a mindset problem that we are having, the inferiority complexes, uh, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the colonial mentality, self-hate, that we are not able to do, to take advantage of the power that we have got uh, after we have struggled so much. We don't like politics, I mean uh, policies. We don't like uh, intellectual capacity to um, uh, understand the issues that are at hand, that need to be solved, particularly to pull black people out of uh, the miserable conditions under which they find themselves. So we have got these minerals. South Africa is not, it's not poor at all. We have got a variety of, um, of um, uh, minerals that should make us the envy of many all over the world, you know? And, but we are not doing anything to um, uh, benefit uh, the majority of our people. And ever since the discovery of these minerals, uh, black people have always been at the receiving end of this bounty, this this um, richness that we have got. We were we were excluded from benefiting, except as um, uh, uh, laborers who will go underground to go and get these minerals for for other people. Why aren't we using them to benefit the majority of our people? We have got this country with its uh, wonderful climatic conditions where we can plant different crops in different parts of the country uh, and, and, and in such a way that will ensure that we uh, are able to give one another a good life, but we are not doing it. We have got so much land with just 60 million uh, souls, uh, the land is so big that we can share it and get more uh, people uh, making a living uh, out, of, out of agriculture and so on. And it is 27 years and we are no, nowhere near giving black people land. And I think that we don't even have a serious intention to give black people land. In 27 years, uh, there is just talk. And presently, there is, there is uh, this bill in parliament uh, about amending the constitution so that we can, uh, black people can be given land. But I argue that in our heart of hearts, we really don't want to give black people land. There is no fire in our belly. Uh, uh, about giving, giving black people land. And that explains why uh, up to today, we have not yet given black people land. And even if we amend section 25, I can assure you, it is not going to happen for black people. I'm saying that uh, it, we are a country with the most advanced infrastructure um, on the African continent in terms of roads, in terms of bridges, in terms of uh, buildings, in terms of um, banks and insurance companies, and so on, so, so on. Yet, uh, uh, 27 years later, the vast majority of our people are getting poorer and poorer, and so on. I'm saying that we don't have a, a lack of human capacity, the knowledge to do things, you know, the, the capacity that uh, has built the how train, that has built the stadia that we have over, look at uh, 2010, how we were able to build this uh, uh, stadiums so that uh, uh, the world can come and play here. The hotels, 
and and the telecoms um, um, infrastructure that we have got it's it's um, almost world class and yet the vast majority of people are not uh, benefiting we have good universities with good researchers um, uh, uh, and, 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 and engineers that are produced there and so on. And yet we are not using these um, uh, resources that we have got to advance uh, the, the, the cause of black people. So we have become the most unequal society and deteriorating all the time. Um, under democracy and black people are getting poorer and poorer and we are in power and as uh, 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 who is the, 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 the author of uh, or the, the compiler of uh, Chris Van Veek had said we Steve had said we are on this path to give South Africa the, uh, a more human face and we are not doing that and in, instead uh, the, the, the human face is deteriorating all the time under our, our, uh, under our watch. And I'm saying that this is because of a lack of um, uh, black consciousness or African humanism, if you so, want, you so wish. And it is not a political slogan. It affects uh, all of us. That is, as black people, we need to have a, a, a world outlook um, that affirms us in every sphere of our lives. It is not a political party that is banning the trains. It's not a political party that is banning our schools and our clinics and our libraries for our children. It's not a political party that is breaking into schools to steal computers for our little ones. It is the entire society that lacks basic respect for itself, for their people, and therefore we don't work for our people when we have got the tools to do so. If we are in charge of municipalities, we don't use those municipalities. Even it is black people who are in charge, who are um, uh, running those municipalities. We don't work hard enough to ensure that we pull one another out of uh, out of uh, uh, poverty. So it is. It isn't. You might have noticed that in the book, I, I don't talk about political parties per se, uh, because black consciousness ought not to be the slogan of a political party. It is a slogan that all of us must have, and it must manifest itself in everything that we do, how we heal our people in the clinics and in hospitals, how we teach our children at school, the kind of material that we give them, and the fact that we are not ashamed, that our children are running away from us. We ourselves are taking our children out from our own communities, and black people are the only ones who won't teach their children and are quite glad to take them somewhere else to be taught by other people. And yet, from the president down, we are in charge of the budget and the education system. The president, the minister of education, the MECs, the, the directors general, uh, the, the, the district manager, uh, the principal, the teacher in the classroom, the parents, we are all black. Why is it that we can't create an education system uh, that is, 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 is suitable for our children? And instead, we, we, we cut them out to go and taught by, to be taught by other people. So I'm saying that this is all a result of colonial mentality. And I can bet you my last cent that there is no other community that will uh, take their children away to be taught by others. They all fight to teach their own children, but we won't. We are running away from ourselves. So this, this is what um, motivated me.
to write this book. And, and as I say earlier on, um, it was said to be very angry. Um, and I think that a lot of black people are angry with where we are at the moment. Taking, taking from what Dr. Mangan has just said, Matata, um, the, the, the treatment, um, the location of black consciousness as a philosophy, as part of the public discourse, uh, I guess what he's saying is that it hasn't been sufficiently placed. There hasn't been a sufficient discussion. And, and, and one is wondering why is that the case? Um, is it, is, was it an inevitable neglect arising out of the urgency to, uh, to address technical, practical things? Or is it perhaps because it was seen, it was not fashionable for say the ANC UDF to talk about identity issues, consciousness, because the, the, the concern was that it tends to be exclusionary. It tends to exclude, it's more Afrocentric. So, so let's, let's stick with non-racialism and, and uh, but in the in the in in the uh, focus on non-racialism, the issue of black consciousness and identity were kind of sidelined. It was a discussion of non-racialism without identity, without touching on race. Um, would that would that commentary be be fair? Yeah, I think it would be fair, but also I think it would be important to make a distinction between black consciousness as a philosophy and black consciousness as a policy position of the movement. So <clears throat> whilst the philosophy uh, remains important, um, people, for example, in the ANC felt that the BCM uh, <clears throat> was becoming something else and, and not coming under its own wing. And as such, uh, the at the point of 94, when we should have had this discussion about, we, we, we now are in charge of all these things that uh, 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 Mangena is talking about. Uh, <clears throat> we are no longer outside. We're inside, we are in charge. Um, that discussion didn't happen because if it had happened, it would have dealt with the uh, mentality that the book decries. Uh, <clears throat> um, for example, uh, <clears throat> if I was to, to look into uh, 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 some of the things that uh, uh, he says in the book, uh, in the health sector, the, 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 there's a whole discussion around uh, uh, um, the, the COVID and uh, how people are behaving, professionals, uh, nurses, doctors who are being pulled out of theatres and uh, uh, to leave uh, patients on uh, um, um, <clears throat> theatre tables. Um, <clears throat> But the, the black bourgeoisie that he speaks about, uh, when the, who, who must be the, the engine that runs uh, uh, this transformation that must happen, have actually accepted that um, the public sector is not going to work. So when the vaccination uh, uh, around COVID uh, happened, people went to these public places and they were treated very well. And they came back, they were quite surprised. People were writing eloquently about how uh, <clears throat> the staff was courteous, they, they, they were professional, they were efficient, because subconsciously or consciously, people have accepted that at a public level, this is not going to happen. Uh, the, the, the public sector is not going to be efficient, professional, and courteous uh, <clears throat> because we haven't 
appropriated the public space as our own. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I think it didn't happen because people felt that the philosophy had become uh, uh, too much of an organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> and I would say, uh, for example, uh, to Datemangin now, um, you, 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 you are bringing the philosophy as almost like uh, uh, a, uh, a tablet that, if taken, would solve all the problems that somebody would be having. It doesn't really matter uh, whether it's in the health sector, in the education sector, in, in working, whether you are in an SOE or, or wherever, as long as you have this tablet. Uh, if you swallow this tablet, um, all your problems will be resolved. Uh, some people might think this is unrealistic. Um, okay, okay. The, the, back to you, Tatumania. There is a... Yes, uh, yes there might, there are people who might think so. Uh, let me let me let me add this before before you you. I'm trying to enrich your answer by adding yet another question. Um, there is a little bit of scholars uh, that have had um, to lead post-colonial states. Sankara, in talking about culture and romanticism of African culture. Um, Fanon warned against romanticism that gets attached to pre-colonial culture. Uh, Biko also spoke about this, this obsession with pre van Riebeck culture. Uh, and so when we talk about African identity and African culture, there's a little bit of hankering for the, for the past, as if that which existed in a pre-colonial past can be replicated in the contemporary world. Uh, and this leads me to the issue of land. Um, there's an issue about whether or not Africans really, they, they, there's a significant population that really wants land on, uh, and if we have to have land, what should we use it for? Uh, so there's this idealism, obviously is related to, it was all about the struggle. Uh, it, it was all about the land and repossession of the land, but how 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 prominent is still that demand for land, or are we talking of urban development now, or are we talking of the return back to the land? That's the one thing. And the second issue is about language, um, language perhaps and culture, but more language and. What you talk about the need to teach our kids African language, this and that. Someone else, you know, innocently might ask, like, you know, how young seventeen are we Spain? You know, you speak English. You speak so English is a commercial language. You have to be eloquent. So, so there's a there's a there's a clash somewhat. Uh, perhaps it's not it's 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 fabricated between this romanticism. Uh, and the reality of the current world, especially in relation to land and language. Um, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the, in fact, some people, in, even in the book, I don't claim that uh, black consciousness will solve everything. I'm saying that it is, it is mere, it's like Wi-Fi, you know? And when, you, when you've got Wi-Fi, you are able to do all sorts of things that you will not be able to do when you don't have. It's an intangible thing. And, and so um, it, it, is, it is not a, a magic bullet that will immediately solve everything that we have got. And, and there is no single thing in the world that is able to solve all the problems that you might have. But I'm saying it's Wi-Fi. And I'm saying that if we had that Wi-Fi, 
then we will be able to tackle all the other issues that we have in this country. And uh, some people might say that it's, you know, it's a reductionism to, you know, everything is solved by black consciousness. No, by no means, no. The black consciousness, as I say, is an, it's, it gives us a good view. It gives us pride in ourselves. It, it makes us to love ourselves. And therefore, uh, it enables me that when I'm a counselor, I'll do my best for my people and for my community, for these black people who I'm part of. Unlike if I've got, I, I, I hate myself, I hate my race, I hate my people, I believe that they deserve Mikuku, they deserve the bucket system, toilet system, you know, that they deserve to, to live in, in dirty environments and so on. So I don't work for them. And I believe that it is terribly important that uh, we, we get this out of the way. And then we will be able then to, to tackle all the other things that, 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 that uh, uh, require to be tackled so that black people get out of poverty and are true owners of this country. You know, the, 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 the language issues, uh, there is, uh, we conflate um, or mistake uh, language with education, with knowledge. You know, you go to places like Korea or Japan and so they don't talk, or, or Germany. They, 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 they are so advanced economically, technologically, and so on. They don't, most of them can uh, speak English at all. They speak their own languages. And all I'm saying is that uh, our kids uh, need to be taught in the language that they understand. We shouldn't put barriers in, in, on their part of education by requiring that they should um, uh, be educated in a, in, a, in, a, in a foreign language. Before they could understand concepts like one, two, three, four, it is one, two, three, four is the same whether it is in Afrikaans or in Russian or in Sepedi or so on. The most important thing is to make our kids to understand concepts. You know, I was a, a deputy minister of education responsible for maths and science education. And one of the things that we, we, we observed was that kids in Northern Cape and Western Cape who did uh, their their science and maths education in Afrikaans or English that were their home languages tended to do better than children elsewhere, like in Limpopo, where we speak different languages, but kids are forced in most cases to do these things in a foreign language. And that's, that's, that was observable. And incidentally, a school in a primary school in the Western Cape, um, uh, tried to teach as an experiment um, uh, white kids who were mixed with uh, black kids uh, science in Isitosa and in English. And they were surprised how white children struggled uh, with those subjects. And some of those children said, white children said, their respect for black children has uh, increased enormously um, when they realize how tough it is to learn in a language that is not your own. And so all I'm saying is that they, we should teach our children in their own languages, especially at uh, kindergarten and in the primary schools and so on. English is an international language. Yes, they can start learning that language um, uh, at intermediate level, and then we, they can use that language to, later on and learn in that language if they so wish. Uh, but it is also easier for them to understand another language if they understand their own. If they are able to read and understand their own languages. You have seen studies internationally and tests that shows that 
South African children cannot read for many at a different levels of their educational journey. And even in their own mother tongue, they can't read for many. And so we are having this big problem of kids who find school a, diff a, a, a difficult place. And maybe that's responsible for the uh, uh, huge dropout rate because kids don't enjoy, don't understand what is it that they are, uh, they are, they are, they are learning. They drop out in, from school, they drop out at university level, and you people are settled with uh, those that are at universities with kids who cannot um, uh, grasp the material that is offered to them. One of the reasons being that their grasp of language and concepts is poor. And if they had a good grasp of language and concepts from kindergarten right up, they will be better. And as a result, we are wasteful. Up to 40% of, uh, of our young who enter university drop out. And then I can assure you, uh, proportionally speaking, it is mainly uh, black kids who drop out of university because they can't um, uh, uh, deal with the material uh, that, that, that faces them. Now, with regards to land, land is everything. First and foremost, it defines who you are. You know, as a, a, you know, in Sepedi, they say, Hoshi ke Hoshi kabatu and ganach. So you can't be anything unless you've got your, your land where, where you belong. So as South Africans, we belong to this country because this is our land as a collective. But land is also a means of livelihood. Whether you are in the urban area, areas or you in the rural areas. I'm in Polokwane and I can assure you that when I walk the streets of Polokwane, everything that is there is not owned by the black majority that live in this province. Probably uh, uh, less than 1% of the population here is, is, is white. But in the in, in the Polokwane city, as you walk the streets, uh, that that land does not belong to black people, even if they are the vast majority. And the buildings, and so on, they belong to insurance companies, to banks, to companies, and, and all sorts of people like that. So both in the urban and in the rural areas, uh, if we are to get black people out of uh, poverty, and to reduce inequality, we have got to give them land, uh, both in the urban areas and in the rural areas. And in the rural areas, I say in the book that we have not had any intention to give them land. We, no preparations were made because black people were alienated from land for many decades, if not centuries. Um, and I think the likes of Matata are now beginning to learn how to to reconnect uh, with this land that is that is ours. Now that you know, they are, they are there. There is a difference between uh, understanding the value of land and actually connecting with it at the practical level, where you produce uh, 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 food, where you 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 uh, you have animals uh, that 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 are part of your livelihood as, as a people. So let us want land and for all this. And if we if we had wanted them to do so, we would be uh, training our kids as uh, farmers, as uh, agronomists, as uh, agricultural economists, uh, as uh, veterinarian surgeons, as extension uh, officers, and so on. But we have not been doing anything of the sort. Mm -hmm. Yes, Matata, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Um, um, <clears throat> so your, your argument then in the book is that uh, 
for <clears throat> for the people in Alex who were uh, offered an opportunity to get their land back, but uh, opted for forty thousand rands, uh, or um, um, the half of the dry lands in my village, uh, uh, which used to produce food, but uh, it's now stands for churches and uh, lodges where people go there with uh, young girls and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> you, 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 you are arguing that if people had black consciousness in their heads, that stuff wouldn't happen. Is that is that uh, where you are? It might happen to a certain extent, whether you will have those lodges, or you will have those young girls are doing that. But the the vast majority, the general tendency, the general uh, movement will be towards making that land productive. And people will be having extension officers who will be helping them to, 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 to till the land. You know, when I was a, 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 a young man, uh, first as a, say, a child, uh, I, 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 I grew up on a white man's farm until the age of 10, you know? Um, so the, 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 there was that activity around the land and what it produces and so on. And then later on, um, I went to live in a, a, a communal area um, where, you know, uh, people had land, they were plowing and so on. There were ex these extension officers uh, that, that um, uh, uh, helped people with their problems dealing with land and with uh, all the problems that are associated with that. Uh, the diseases that you have, the draft power that you need, um, the kind of uh, crops that are suitable for uh, which soil and so on. But all those things have kind of disappeared or diminished extensively uh, after democracy. We have become more land stupid uh, than before, you know? Um, and so I'm saying, that black consciousness would have played a, an important role in um, uh, uh, enabling us to be producers on our own land. And, and instead of us running uh, all over the world, going to uh, implore people to come and invest, uh, when we need, we leave the vast majority of our people um uh, in this position it's it's something that i'm saying should not happen let me let me put you on the spot Matad. yeah uh listening to what uh that Mangana was saying and having listened to other conversations as well and this is something that Njabula Ndebele has touched on who's written a very wonderful forward to this book but touched on it elsewhere, is that at times we speak of problems as if we are not in charge. We are free people in charge of a government with huge resources. And, and, and yet we, 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 we present these problems as if they are a result of captivity. We are kept somewhere restrained in what we can do or can't do. Perhaps black consciousness is part, the lack of is part of that restraint, but it might be difficult for one to believe that that alone would be a major defect that incapacitates us to do even the most basic things. I mean, the, the, I guess I'm kind of rephrasing the question you uh, you put to Ndatemang and back to you, but I mean, are we totally powerless? Are we, 
but we are in charge. Some of these things are basic things. Why? Why? Yeah. 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 No. No. I. I. I hear you. And that um, uh, um, uh, touches on it in the book uh, uh, that uh, uh, we behave as if ninety four didn't happen. Yeah. Ninety four. He said. Uh, was uh, <clears throat> what he calls uh, a, uh, I want to find the, that phrase. Um, um, <clears throat> okay, I'll find it. But uh, 94 represented a major uh, uh, breakthrough with all its problems. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm not going to take him uh, 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 along the path that says, but you you, you said 94 wasn't uh, all that important. Uh, <laughs> and you didn't even contest the elections. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to his assertion in the book mm -hmm. that it was uh, an important point uh, where power, political power at least, uh, transferred, uh, and that should have uh, enabled the economic power to follow, but it didn't. Uh, uh, and he is saying it's because people didn't have black consciousness. Uh, <clears throat> but I, 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 my, my own sense is that uh, you, you had a state that was captured from the beginning. We speak about nine wasted years these days, but really, if you're talking about the failure of the state to actually provide what it could have provided because the resources were there, the capture happened right at the, uh, uh, at, at the beginning in, in 94. So <clears throat> your question about, uh, uh, we, we speak as if, we don't have the power. Uh, we probably don't have the power because if you listen to De Klerk and his foundation now, uh, uh, as people start to assert issues of justice and uh, rejecting some of the sunset clauses and the land issues, that there, there, there are agreements that nobody knew about uh, that explain why what should logically have happened didn't happen. Mm. Mm. So, <laughs> that I mean, yeah. do we really don't have the power? I mean, that that's uh, that should be an over exaggeration. We 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 uh, <clears throat> 1994 is not perfect. Mm. 1994. Uh, has got its awards and, and pimples and um, uh, all sorts of, of problems. But it is an advance, you know. We are no longer under the whip and under the heel of um, uh, white people, politically speaking. They are no longer arresting us and taking us to prison. And so we are free to organize. We are in charge of the budget um, of uh, billions and billions of rands that are in our hands. But we would not use that uh, in order to, to advance. I'm, I'm saying that we should stop complaining and moaning about uh, this 9% of the population that are white people. Granted, they own present um, most of the land, but why don't we change that? They, they own um, the, the the economy in all its as well, mining and what if you why don't we change that because now we have got political power to be able to do that if, but, uh, but, uh, if isn't are, that really the, the thing uh, uh, if you follow uh, uh, what is now imagined uh, probably a lot of people suspected but it's now imagined that uh, this negotiation was an, a negotiation for accommodation, right? 
it was not a, a negotiation of a takeover. It was a negotiation of an accommodation of black people into this white structure. So you, you, that white structure did not negotiate itself out of existence. So what you are expecting to see happen cannot happen because even though people are in office, they are not in power. And, and by the way, Lua and Antate Mangena, you once expressed that you has your reluctance to participate in the 94 elections. Yes. So who was I hitting in the interim? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, the point is this, you know, uh, accept that all the defects that you are talking about with the, mm. with the negotiations and so on, mm. are we going to be uh, uh, captives of that forever? Are we going to sit in there in that uh, uh, accommodated place in which we have been put uh, and do nothing to break out of that? Even if we have advanced, you know, the, 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 the South African Defense Force, the police, uh, the, 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 the state infrastructure and so on, we can now control. And, and why is might have negotiated to, to accommodate us? Now, are we, are we going to remain in the womb uh, forever or are we are going to break out or we are going to sit and complain that 1994 was what it was with all its defects and so on. Going forward as a people, are we going to do that? That's why I'm saying in the book that black consciousness, if it is to be relevant now, it must accept the victory or the breakthrough of 1994 and operate from that, move forward, stand on the, on the uh, shoulders of all our people that have taken us to 1994. 1994 didn't just happen uh, on its own. It was a result of the struggles of our people. And that, that uh, 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 victory should be appropriated by us. And we use it to go forward to change the circumstances of our people with the tools. Prior to 1994, we couldn't make laws in parliament. We couldn't. We were not running the state. We were not running the municipalities and so forth. We did not have the budget. Now we do, and so it sounds like it sounds like you are calling for yet another cultural revival. Um, and if that hasn't happened so far, it means that. Uh, perhaps the powers that be, those who are prominent in society, have closed off any opportunities of that reimagining should happen. So if the hegemonic powers are opposed to that cultural reawakening, then where do you see it coming from? The country and this society does not be belong to those who are in office at the moment. That is as individuals or as parties. This country belongs to all of us as a people. And in fact, it is a mentality that we must kill. Um, you, you, you notice that when people have got problems, they say we, we are not going to vote, as if they are trying to spite someone as if they don't have the power to change their own circumstances. If they don't vote, then they are spiting someone. Why? Why? They are free now to organize. They can organize themselves into another party, into a, a movement that, that can change their circumstances. So we are not beholden to, we should not be beholden to those who, who are in office at this point in time. In the general history of a people, what we are going through 27 years now is probably just a little atom, you know? It is, it is a, it's a little uh, a plot, a little uh, spot here and there. In the 
general course of the march of history of a people. It is a small space. So I'm saying that we as a people, and it isn't only those that are in power that have got a colonial mentality, but all of us as a people, you know, the, our dress, uh, the, uh, what we eat, uh, the, the general uh, uh, deportment is that of a people that hate themselves and hate their own kind uh, to the extent that we do the kind of things that we are doing to one another, that we won't serve uh, one another the way we are we are not we are, we are we are doing you look at other societies in the world i'm saying that we believe in nothing you know uh, you, you just look at I, I, maybe i shouldn't make this example but look at the taliban eh? they, they believe, you might not believe in that but they have got major the whole of europe and the, the north america on the run look at them you simple people but they believe in themselves and in their in what they are doing some of it the things that they do uh, are despicable they we don't like them and so but it shows you what people can do if they believe in something the chinese uh, how they have taken their country and their people from the backwaters of the world a despised people and they are now a proud uh, people that we are now saying no we shouldn't be getting everything from china let's do this but all our leaders go to china every now and then but because since 1949 they believed in something and in their people and they worked to take their people out of poverty and this is what we need to do believe in something what is it that we believe in Okay. I think I think you've 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 summarized the essence of the book quite well, and and uh, we'll take those words as your last word. Matata, is there any possibility of reimagining or believing in something new, or are we stuck as your as your parting parting shot? There has to be hope, and I think that is the essence of what the book is about. Uh, <clears throat> it bemoans it. Uh, puts pointers because there has to be hope. Something has to start somewhere. And it may not necessarily have to be a political party. Uh, it may be a, a movement of people uh, uh, <clears throat> which kickstarts this uh, mental uh, liberation that uh, black consciousness, even in the beginning, said was a prerequisite for physical uh, uh, freedom. You needed to be free up here in order to be free here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, because if you are free here, but you are not free up there, you, 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 you were not free, actually. And uh, <clears throat> in essence, that's where we are. And uh, <clears throat> the, the book, it's a, a, a it's a timely reminder uh, of um, work not done that should be done. Well, with those words, uh, thank you, thank you, Matata. Um, I think the book offers um, a very useful uh, alternative perspective, but it's also a reminder of what activate people of what forms human agency. That everything else, whatever we do, depends on how we imagine ourselves. Um, and how, what we think of, us, of ourselves is pretty much based on what we know about ourselves. So if we think we are incapable, therefore we will lack initiative. Uh, so there's a connection between knowledge, identity, and activism. Uh, the book really tells us that our problems are not just about policy problems. Uh, everything else starts with conception, with human mind conception, and the, 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 the belief in oneself that what you are thinking can actually happen. Because most people think of all sorts of things, but because they, they lack self-esteem, uh, they, they, they don't go on to implement their thoughts because they don't believe in themselves. So the book says, start with believing that you are worth something 
And, and with that sense of self-worth, then everything you imagine, you implement, because you believe that you are capable of doing something. So it's a very important book that provides a philosophical perspective to some of the practical problems that we have, because all these practical problems start from conception. Something may be practical, it doesn't mean that the solution there too should necessarily be practical, but it begins with conception. So this book calls us to rethink some of the things that are happening. It calls us into action. And Daddy Mangena, thank you for this book. And I would like to urge South Africans out there to go out and get this book. It's a wonderful read. It, it relates to practical issues that you can identify with. Um, thank you very much and goodbye.